Today I'm going to be showing you guys how to do this background split effect in After Effects, so let's get right into it. Okay, so here I have this clip of Central C, and the first thing that you're gonna go ahead and do is roto brush out your subject. I already went and did that here. Now turn on the proportional grid. This is gonna help you split up the background when you're adding on the effect. Here's an example of what it looks like vertically, but I'm gonna do one horizontally for you guys. So for this first background there, I'm gonna come up to my pen tool and just cut out a third just like that. Then I'm gonna duplicate the background layer again and delete the mask. And I'm gonna do now the middle section again, just using the proportional grid to line it up perfectly. And there we go. And do the same for the last one. I've seen this effect done lots of times. I'm not sure if this is the best way to do it, honestly, but it's, it's a way to do it and it'll work and it'll look good. So now you can take off the proportional grid or you can leave it on. Now I'm going to drag on the effect called offset on all three of these layers. And so I'm going to start on this bottom third here real quick. And to help me out, I'm just going to make these two top layers invisible. And then right around here, I'm going to set a keyframe for shift center two in its neutral position, just leaving it in its default place. And then on the first frame here, I'm going to set a keyframe so that it slides over like this. And I'll just go over one or two laps, you know, nothing crazy. And then I'm going to highlight these keyframes, open up the speed graph, and I want it to start off fast at the beginning and slow at the end. So I'm just going to drag this point over here just like that. Now on the second layer, I'm gonna have it come in a little bit later in the clip. So right around here, set the shift center to its default position. And then again, shift it over, but this time I'm gonna shift it, have it shift from the other side. So set that keyframe here and then highlight your keyframes. Open up the graph editor again and do the same thing. Have it start off fast at the beginning and then slow down. And then now on this top layer, I'm gonna have it come in from the same side that the bottom layer came from. So from the right to the left, but this time I'm gonna have it happen at the end of the clip. So I'm sort of having one layer come in at the beginning, one in the middle, and then one at the end. So set the shift center to right there, like that. And then maybe right around here, just drag it over like that setting that keyframe and then go ahead and highlight those keyframes easy to ease open up the graph editor and repeat the process so right now i have something that looks like this and that's not quite what i'm going for so i'm going to just mess around with the keyframes a little bit until i have something that i want for this top layer i'm just going to move this value over to the left a bit and just like that i think it looks pretty cool but obviously there's no motion blur really going on so to fix that what i'm going to do is drag on this effect called directional blur and i'm just going to add it on all three of these layers and then I'm gonna set the direction to 90 degrees since it is horizontal. And for this first layer, I'm going to set the blur length to something like 20 or 30, right around 33. And then as that layer corrects itself, just bring it back down to zero. And then you don't have to, but what I'm gonna go ahead and do is mess with the speed graph on that as well, just to have everything look extra smooth, just have everything, you know, work together coherently. Um, and you can definitely mess around with those values as much as you want. And then you just essentially repeat the process again for all three of those layers with directional blur. So before I pre-compose these layers, this is what it's gonna look like right now. And now I'm gonna pre-compose these bottom three layers with Control Shift C. And next, as you can see right here, the line is still a little bit harsh. So what I'm gonna do is add on one more directional blur. I'll leave the direction at zero degrees so that we're gonna get rid of the horizontal lines with the vertical directional blur. And you're just gonna leave the direction at zero degrees and set the blur length to something at about four or five and then keyframe it there and then on the last frame bring it back down to zero like that but now essentially i want to add some more sauce to it i think it's a little bit bland so i'm going to add on some deep glow on the top roto brushed out layer have them a little bit brighter at the beginning and then as the background calms down bring the exposure back to zero and i'm going to add on as well some sapphire flicker which is a sapphire paid plugin <clears throat> set the amplitude to 0.7 and then on the last frame bring it back down to zero easy easier keyframes as always and typically whenever you don't 
easy ease your keyframes. Your family won't love you back. I am liking how this is looking. I think I'm just going to leave it like this. <clears throat> but on this example on the screen, I did add a digital asset that I downloaded from actionvfx.com, I believe. It's called like a spell hit. So you can add something on like that. You can also add on other assets and effects from my website, jmovfx.com. I released a pack called the Shockwave Distortion Pack, and it's really awesome. It's got over 70 good overlays in there for you to use that are super high quality. And all you have to do is drag and drop it into your video and you're done. Leave a comment for what tutorial you want me to do next. Turn on post notifications, subscribe, and make sure to like. I appreciate you guys and have a great rest of your day. Peace.